So our first question was, are there any boxes we need to tick when applying for funding? Um, in brief, yes, there certainly are. I mean, each funder will have their own boxes and your main job really is to make sure that you, you tick them. Um, the thing I always say to people is when you've got a project that you're looking for funding for, make sure to approach it from as many different angles as possible. Um, so you might be doing a, a theatre show, for example. Um, you know, could it be said that it has themes around mental health? Could it have themes around um, women and children? Could it have um, something about the environment or the climate? You know, just look at as many different ways that people could engage with your project as possible. So then that will enable you to go out to a wider range of funders who have different interests. Um, and then when you go into those funders, make sure you play up that element of your project that they'll be most interested in. The main thing to remember about funders is they exist to give out money for a particular purpose. Your job is to say to them, I've got this project and it's going to enable you to spend money on what it is that you want to see happen. Um, so just give them the tools to be able to see why your project really clearly enables them to, to do what it is that they, that they exist for. Um, I think some kind of general things that will tick funders boxes for an organization, showing you've got a good track record. Um, so that's things like quotes, evidence, audience data, other people that have funded you, you know, funding generally attracts more funding. If you can show someone that a local council or an arts council or one that has invested in you, that, that gives them confidence that, that you know what you're doing. Um, a clarity of your ideas. You know, can you really succinctly show them what it is that you're wanting to achieve? That's something that really helps with funders. Um, and I think we'll come onto this a bit more later as well, but um, showing that you are a minimal risk. Uh, funders tend to be quite risk averse. They like to fund in things that they have confidence will happen and that you can achieve what you said you're going to achieve. So if you can show them as much as possible that you are a, a non risky entity, um, that's always a really good thing to do. There's various ways you can do that. You know, showing a good track record is, is one way of doing it. Show you've got good kind of processes in, in place to, to, to deal with funding or whatever it might be. Showing that all of your partners are confirmed, all of those sorts of things just helps to assure them that you can do what you've said. Um, yeah, so those are some things I think to, to think about from the start. That's great. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, hi, David. Um, my question so it does sort of uh, tie in a lot with with what you just said but if you could just uh expand on what some of the classic mistakes people make that mistakes that are easy to make but also easy to avoid yeah um so the first one goes back to, to what i just said which is not ticking the boxes of what the funder wants um it's very easy to want to tell people about your fantastic project and it might be great but if you're not highlighting the areas that a funder wants to to tick then it's not going to be successful so just be really clear, what do they want? How can I play up to that as, as much as possible? Um, you can't just write one application for 10 different funders. It, you know, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to tweak and, and pull things out in different ways. So that's the first, that's the first thing. Um, again, as I was saying before, I think one of the major things I see is people just not being clear in, in their ideas and what they're saying to a funder. This is really easy to do when you are creating a project, delivering it, it's been in your head for years, you know, you know it inside out. It's surprising how much of the time when you put it on paper, it just doesn't make any sense to anybody else. Um, so, you know, get someone else to read it. And um, when I'm writing applications, I'll write it and then I'll, I'll do something else for a couple of days, work on something else, and then kind of come back to something with, with kind of fresh eyes. Um, just make sure you're reading it from the point of view of someone who has no idea what's, what's going on. Does it make sense? Um, this is really hard at the moment with the new Arts Council application form. If, if people have had a look at the new project grant form, there is so little space in that application form to actually talk about what you're actually doing. Um, so particularly for the Arts Council, but for others as well, just go back to things with, with, with a fresh pair of eyes. Is it really obvious what it is that I want to, I want to do? Um, it's surprising how often that happens. Um, and then again, going back to, to what, I, what I said before, I think what people sometimes do is, yes, get completely bogged down in your project, but that funder is investing, yes, in the project, but they're investing in you. How can you show them that you're someone that can, that can use their funds um, responsibly, that you know how to do that? So as I say, that might be showing them that you've used funds similarly before. It might be the processes that you have in place. Um, but, but don't forget that, yes, they want to fund the work, but they need to trust that you can do it as well. So don't ignore that. 
that that part of it is just really really important um yeah but i think probably the main one in this that i see time and time again even with large organizations is that clarity of the idea um get someone else to look at it come in with a fresh pair of eyes make sure it's it's really simple what it is that you want to you want to do could i just um ask another question on top of that so you said different applications for different organizations obviously we've got a future question um about which organizations are best to apply to but um like for instance arts council are there any specific points that you would say arts council look for when applying for funding or or a different organization applying for funding just off the top of your head we could we could talk all morning about what the arts council want it would be a very very lengthy conversation <laughs> um the with the arts council again most people be aware they they released their new strategy actually before covid but it's only recently kind of come into effect they've redone the the project grants application form and as i was saying before it's a really interesting form because there's so little um space to write what you're doing it's all about how does your idea fit their priorities mm. so they have four main priorities um which is a test of my is my memory inclusivity and relevance um ambition and quality, dynamism, environmental sustainability. You don't need to hit all of them, but you must have a really, really good understanding of what those things mean. Um, oh my God, there is reams and reams of stuff online that you can that you can read about them. Um, but even just kind of looking at the main overview document will give you a sense of what they mean. The Arts Council, particularly because it's public money, they are just so hot on whatever they fund meeting their outcomes. So get to know inside out, those four things that they're really, really interested in. Um, and as I say, the whole point of the application form is it makes you talk about how do you meet their outcomes. You've got a lovely idea, but how are you achieving what they want to achieve? Um, so those are the, yeah, just really get to know those for the Arts Council. Um, you know, for other funders, you know, it should be fairly clear from their, from their websites what it is that they're, they're interested in. Um, I mean, in terms of having you can't have an application that speaks to all funders. That doesn't mean that you have to completely start from zero for every single one. Um, you know, for example, there are a number of funders that like to support early career artists. Um, you know, just make sure in that application, maybe it's sometimes just really as simple as writing early career next to someone's name or, or you know, whatever it might be. You know, there are really simple things you can do, but just something that will tick that box in their head that you're doing what they, they want to do. Um, but yes, maybe we come back another time and talk in length about the Arts Council because it's um, important to know what it is that they, they're interested in. Cool, thank you. So when, when we're applying for funds, do we need to know exactly how much we want? Like, do we write down the exact amount? Because we've been looking and that there's been like, there's grants for like 30,000 and under and there's grants for like up to 100 grand and it's like, because we're an emerging theatre company, do we go for the lower one or do we do we do we just shoot for the for the higher one? How does it how does it work? Yeah. Um, so I would say it's always good to have a figure. Um, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it's useful for you to know what you might be getting. Um, very occasionally with a funder, they they don't want you to suggest a figure, and then that just leaves you in a weird sort of land as you have no idea what's going to sort of uh, arrive, which is very hard for planning. Um, but the second part comes back to that idea again of risk. If you're saying to a funder, just give me some money, um, it doesn't give me great confidence that you know how much you need. It doesn't give me great confidence that you're you're building a portfolio of funding that's gonna help you achieve your, your project. You know, I think you need to be quite kind of straightforward. This is how much we need from you to make it happen. Um, all fundraising in general is this balance between what do I need and what do I think I can get? A big part of my job is constantly playing this sort of game as to, you know, how much is it we actually need to do something and, and where, you know, how much can I get away with, basically? Um, the best way to kind of try to answer that second bit, what can I get away with, is look at that funder, look at who else they've funded, you know, are there organisations similar to you, projects similar to yours, and see how much they've they've given to them. The Arts Council is quite a simple case on this. It's all publicly available. They're massive spreadsheets, um, so they take a bit of rummaging through, but you can easily get all of that information. 